when we first got to the airport I was so nervous I mean my mom dropped me off like I've never been on a trip where I didn't know anybody I didn't know anything so going into it it was a little nerve-wracking like how I'm gonna relate to all these people or am I gonna be shy am I gonna talk but once I got there everybody was really friendly like it was nice it was just so exciting because I've never been out of the country before and I always like dreamed about what it might look like to be in another culture and when we got to Costa Rica I just remember just it was like a complete cultural shock. I remember seeing the tour bus for the first time and I was like oh my goodness you know this is for real we're really out of the country. It was still nervous, you know, learning a different culture, walking into somewhere where you've never been before, you know, you're different. I've just never been the minority, and it was a learning experience to learn how people reacted and then how people were more laid back in Costa Rica. This is really good. It's just like fruit heaven. Like, really. Heaven. Yes. <laughs> when we first got to Costa Rica, we were welcomed with the best meal ever. It was so yummy. Our first meal when we got to Costa Rica was awesome. Um, we had fresh fruit, we had a salad, uh, beans and, and tortilla chips, which was the best part. Everything was so delicious and the fruit was completely amazing. After we got done eating, we all went and they told us to get in a circle and they got a soccer ball. And it was a game to kind of remember who we all were because we came in three groups the Spanish the business and the biology we kicked a soccer ball to each other and if you got the soccer ball you had to tell something about yourself so that helped us learn a little bit about the other people we were there with and then after we all got settled in and everything we uh, the business group got to walk downtown and um, but when we were walking downtown it was just like my heart fluttered you know like all the people were so nice and everybody just would talk to you and people were outside and enjoying the weather. Totally different than what you see here. You know, kids playing outside. It was just, you know, people on the streets and friendly people. It was um, great to see. Walking around in the town for the first time, um, we passed all these little shops, and it was so cool because it kind of reminded me of a flea market, but not. It was really different, and you saw people bargaining on the side and uh, buying their food, and everything is fresh and ready for you to take, and it was just really cool. There you go. <laughs> you just don't know it from eating in the United States everything is so much more fresh in Costa Rica the pineapple was to die for and I normally hate pineapple and I love the fact that they serve fruit with every meal it's so good <laughs> On the morning where we got up and walked to town, um, it was beautiful. People sitting on their front porch, then letting their kids play, you know. I told my mom when I got home, most people like just left their doors open, like how amazing would that be if we could do that here? Just the trust they have in people and the love and everything that their culture has is just beautiful. They have love and for each other and for other people. You know, everywhere we went, we were welcomed. Uh, people wanted to talk to us, people let us video them, people let us take pictures. And I mean, you know, here, that would be like invading somebody's space, but there, like, they were excited to do it. You know, all smiles and ready to meet new people. Hola. <laughs> Everything was colored so brightly and uh, it was really neat to 
see uh, houses and stuff, and people, like, in the States, they're, everybody's houses are, like, white or brown or something neutral, uh, but in Costa Rica, everything is so bright and colorful, and it really grabs your attention. It's It was really neat to sit down and have a Spanish class that was in the, in Costa Rica. Yo soy frío. You're cold. <laughs> we don't have heat as you do. Okay. Yeah. Um, yo soy Perfect. You can share this one. He wants to know, right? He wants to know who he is. So you have to give him clues. <laughs> So he would guess. Okay, what can you tell him about that? Amigo, ¿cómo te va? Todo bien. Muy bien, ¿y usted? Bien, gracias a Dios. Yo veo tú. Buenas personas. Y Sole. Sole es. She's the mother and she's the president of the company. She's the one who really. The mujer que manda. She's in charge of everything. The food. Um, my favorite uh, meal so far is the one that we had at the coffee farm. I think that was the the chicken was melt in your mouth chicken. So <laughs> it was it was very good. And the juice, every single juice has been different and fresh and. Amazing. <laughs> Have you tried the fresco yet? Yeah, it's so good. I just think the people are awesome here. They are so friendly and nice. They cook good food. The mother, the uh, Presidente, she um, fixed this wonderful meal. And like the salad, she, she was saying something to me I didn't understand. So I go see, and she just kept pouring more and more on my plate. And I just kept eating it. But it was great. I loved it. The food is good. I can eat Tico food every day. I can eat it every day. <laughs> What's the number of acid level? Is it like seven? We went on a tour, and it was fun. Um, it wasn't anything like I thought. Everything was very natural. like. Um, there wasn't anything man-made like a farm you see here, like no machines or um, anything set up. It was all like if you were walking through nature and just saw a plant. Um, there wasn't any coffee beans out, which that was sad, but there was one. And he like opened it up and showed us all the pieces of that. Um, and every, I was surprised everything he said was easy, easily understood. And I just think it's really, really neat that um, they do it because they love it. <laughs> I'm so fascinated about like the plants, the animals, everything. Like it's just, it fascinates me. I am always amazed at the amount of learning that's taking place on our capstone trip to Costa Rica. Uh, students are writing a journal and there's a private and a uh, part that they allow me to read and in reading the students journals and their essays and just seeing the reaction to the speakers uh, that we have in the presentations is uh, truly amazing. Uh, it's a very enjoyable part for me on the trip. And I'm so grateful that I actually have a opportunity to leave out the country and I think that it should be provided to more people to be able to experience something like this because it's really life changing and it, it, I'm appreciative and I think it will make everyone that way of what they have or where, where they're from just to see how another culture lives and I just think it's real fascinating and it's such a great experience and I will remember this forever, I already know. <laughs> I really like hiking around and watching the family dynamic and appreciating like the local business, the local flavor. Um, 
The food was wonderful, of course. The land was beautiful, and the storm in the middle of everything with some of the loudest thunder I've ever heard was really awesome. <laughs> It's been a fantastic learning experience. I've really enjoyed everything we've done. The field trips were wonderful. They have been. Um, becoming, in, becoming part of this culture has a, has a, a, a huge learning experience because I can compare the way it is at home, the way it is here, and see how many very similar um, qualities we all have, but also how very different. I've, I've enjoyed looking at, um, thinking about those, those types of things. And I enjoy writing in my journal about it because it makes you stop and think. You look back and, and um, in retrospect and it gives you a new perspective. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, the SWOT analysis of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats is as follows for our president and for Gabriel. Amazing view, the great view of the mountains and the scenery. We, when we went to the coffee farm, we did a SWOT analysis, which is S W O T strengths, weaknesses, uh, opportunities, and threats. Um, we did it to show the family, what they could do to expand and how they could continue to make money and do what they love but help, help other people. Um, we thought that they needed a logo, um, something that caught people's eye and to get people interested. Um, some of their weaknesses was the road that we came in on was really bumpy and made me car sick. <laughs> and, um, we just did everything to talk about and let them know what we think about what an outsider's view is about how to better their opportunities of maybe um, internationally selling their coffee. But I, I'm glad that they didn't seem to take offense to any of our suggestions or you know any of their potential shortcomings weren't offensive in any way which I don't think they would have been anyway like hey your place is really awesome you could use some advertising because it's so awesome people would want to come here if they knew about it I mean that was really at the heart of our SWOT analysis I think expand or add a product line a new product line as you're thinking of doing they start with a strategic plan, and the beginning of the strategic plan is a SWOT analysis. That you could teach different workshops, like and the health benefits and the ideology and the processes. I was at the coffee farm, and the son of the father came up to me and said, "Money doesn't buy happiness, but happiness is the main thing in, in our culture." And that's what I thought was really neat because it tied in what the culture actually is in Costa Rica. It's not all about the material things that make you happy. Bravia. <laughs>In the downtown market, students were able to examine business operations of another culture, money exchange, bartering, and practice speaking a different language. Our students did terrific. I keep saying that Every part was my favorite part. Every time I get to a new section, I'm like, oh, that's my favorite part. But really, every bit of it was such a learning experience. How could it not be my favorite part? Um, when we went to San Jose, everything was a learning experience. To the bus ride, to getting out at the market, you know. Um, they are like, you could talk people down, you know, like, for the prices, you could talk people down. You know, you can't do that in the United States. People would probably get offended. Um, but we learned how to talk people down on stuff. We bought souvenirs for our family. We bought souvenirs for ourselves. And um, they had a lot of neat stuff. Um, 
And then just the walk through San Jose, you know, it was like a different part of Costa Rica. It was um, the actual town, you know, it was bigger than where we had been staying and it was just a new experience. But the same nice um, giving, you know, people, the same people that were friendly and glad to have us there. It, um, it was just awesome. When we got to the museum, it was it was so different. Um, it was much more than I expected it to be. When we went inside, I was very overwhelmed with all the beautiful sculptures that they had. Uh, everything was golden on the outside of the doorways. There were golden lions up at the top of the doorways. Um, there were paintings up on every ceiling. There was a different painting. Uh, it was so neat because they are so detailed and there was one with the with the harvest on on it and then there was one that we went into and it had angels and it looked like heaven and no matter where you moved these angels seemed to always follow you always look at you at, and see what you were doing and that was really cool Another thing I found neat about Costa Rica is all the food and the meat. Like, you know, in the United States, we go to Walmart and buy our groceries. And in Costa Rica, like, they have little markets where their food just sits out. And you can go and, like, buy meat, cheese, whatever you like. But um, that's really neat. In San Jose, we went through the uh, town, and we got the opportunity to go through it was like the oldest um, place in in San Jose and it was so neat because it was so it looks so antique but yet they kept everything up so well um, we got to eat another Tico meal and completely amazing um, it was just it was very different and it was very humbling I would have to say, oh, of course the food <laughs> is so good. Like, and it's like, they are not stingy because they give you so much. They just like pile it on your plate and stuff. And it's so delicious. And you're just like, you don't want to say no to be rude, but it's just, and it's good, but you just, it's a lot, but it's really good. At the U.S. Embassy, the students were able to gain unique insights to the world of geopolitics, macroeconomics, and the role of world power firsthand. The questions the students asked were fantastic. Um, when we went in, you know, we had to take our belts off, we had to take everything off, you know, very secure about who they let in there and what we were wearing and how we were dressed and how we acted. It was a big deal in there. So also a learning experience so that we knew how to grow and act like adults in that environment. Many of our classroom activities were in an open air setting, which allowed the students to not only listen to a nice lecture series, but also experience the beauty that Costa Rica has to offer. Going to the grocery store was a different experience. It's not Walmart by any means. It's not air conditioning. Nothing is air conditioning. Um, you know, the animals can walk in and out and everything is just so free and open. Um, it's just not what you'd expect. We are definitely high maintenance in the states compared to how they live here, but yet they are so happy and no one seems to you know worry as much as uh, we would in the United States but everything was so uh, different and it was just a great experience. 
everything. It seems to me that I take everything for granted. And when I came here, it really humbled me uh, back down to earth. When we met with Ina, um, I was pretty nervous, to be honest, because uh, I didn't know that we were going to... Uh, I just get nervous in front of big groups, and I got up and I introduced myself, and they are trying to learn to speak English, and so with my very poor Spanish skills, it was really, it was a challenging experience, but really cool. Um, I made some friends that I still talk to uh, over Facebook and um, it's just really, it was a life-changing experience because I didn't think that, you know, it would feel so good to merge into culture and I tried really hard to uh, just speak Spanish and even though I slain their language, <laughs> Um, I still had a great time and we got uh, a lot of laughs out of me trying and um, it was just an awesome experience. I'm very fortunate that I have parents that wanted me to go to school and further my education. Um, kids and Ina do it because they want to get farther in life. They want to provide for their family and for themselves and it was just an experience to learn what they like and what they love and how they go to school every day and how it's different from college in the United States. Um, things they eat, things they say, it was just a learning experience for me and hopefully for them too. Of all the learning outcomes I observed in our students, what surprised me the most was how our students were able to cross-culturally communicate instantly with the Costa Rican students. We had exercises that supported and challenged cultural team building, problem solving, time management skills, and cultural thinking in a global economy. What the students accomplished together was truly remarkable. I was also amazed in meeting and spending time with the ENA students that out of all of the things our students witnessed and saw and experienced, students in their journals overwhelmingly reported that meeting and spending time with the ENA students was the highlight of the trip. This is our coffee! It's called Coffee Pico! Okay, there'll be a very short management lesson and then we're going to apply what we've learned and if we do it well, today's event will be very glorious. The, definition the survival of game. Okay. <laughs> this was not fun, but it was it was a really it was a changing experience cuz Dave gave us about forty dollars to come up with a meal for everybody to eat and we only had we had thirty minutes to um uh run and get get the food get what we needed to eat you know uh we needed to get food we needed to get if we need plates or tin foil or anything um this was this was pretty hard So I think that was probably the toughest time for all of us. We re all of us have different personalities, so our minds clashed in what we were going to buy and what we were going to get and how we were going to spend the money. And so we all had to just pull together and suck up our egos and, you know, find a way to work together. So after we went down to the waterfall, 
you know, we couldn't go back to town, so that's what we were going to eat, was whatever we could buy with that $50. So, trucking to, through town, you know, splitting up in groups, making sure so-and-so got this and so-and-so got that, and making sure we still had enough money. It was a difficult task, but, I mean, I think that that was the one of the biggest learning experiences to learn, you know, sometimes whether you don't like somebody or you're clashing heads, you know, whether you're at work or you're at school, you know, sometimes you get put in groups of people where you don't get along, but you have to come together and you have to suck it up and you have to find a way to make it work so that the job comes out done right and efficiently. When we got to the waterfall, uh, we made some. We made the food to eat, and it wasn't the best in the world. But we were all pretty proud that uh, we came up with this all together and using teamwork. Management survivor. The learning objective of our management survivor exercise was to transition classroom management theory into an outdoor exercise. Students were quizzed on classroom learning. Based on their answers, they were given resources that they would need in order to make the day's experience a success. Their team building skills were then called upon to plan, organize, lead, and control the exercise in order to achieve their objective. Then once we got to the waterfall and we cooked and everything together as a team, then we um, hiked to the waterfall, which was beautiful. When we finally got to the waterfall, it was so beautiful. Um, it was pretty big. It was a pretty big waterfall. And um, we went and we, we got to go swimming in the, um, in the water. And we got to go actually inside the waterfall. And it, it felt like a therapeutic massage just having the water fall down on you. And it was so soothing. And after that long hike up to the waterfall, it felt it just felt so good to take a break and just relax underneath the waterfall. And just the the water drops on your back was so soothing. And we even got in and swam. You know, um, it was awesome. I trip to the uh, Poes volcano uh, first started by being educated a little bit the uh, the volcanologist Carlos Ramirez uh, he took us to um, an auditorium and briefed us on the history of the geology of Costa Rica and its formation and talked about the line of uh, volcanic uh, mountains and and uh, talked about different types of volcano and uh, tectonic plates and talking about uh, the whole Costa Rica is only 40,000 years old. When I was first told about this trip to Costa Rica, I knew that we were going to go on a hike, but I wasn't for sure what to expect. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's going to be like a little one, two minute, maybe 20 minute hike. No, it ended up being like a good two and a half hour hike down into a volcano wearing hard hats and taking an unpaved path that not many people get to experience. Um, it was it was a good hike, especially on the way down. You know, we heard we heard one eruption, um, which was nice. And then once we got down there and got to actually see the eruption, it was great. It's something I've never seen in my lifetime. Um, I enjoyed it. As we were going down, we could hear uh, one of the eruptions. And when we talk about eruption, we're not talking about lava and fire flowing. Uh, it's basically like a gigantic wow, geyser. Uh, 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 gases build up in the mouth of the lake, the crater, and it just pushes the water up and it just rises and falls. And we could hear one on the way down. Then when we arrived at the edge of the volcano, gas form is almost like a phoenix rising from the ashes. It's just a spectacular view that not very many people get a chance to see this uh, live. Um, then Carlos uh, 
briefed us a little bit about some of the uh, history of the activity of this volcano. Uh, the, the lake, the, the water, uh, it has a pH of zero, which is like very acidic. Uh, talked about the, the, the diameter of the mouth of the volcano, which is about a kilometer. So we were standing there, there are lots of uh, rocks that apparently in the 1950s you had a major eruption that threw rocks and lavas all over the place so you could see those rocks and some people took those as souvenirs. Those are the ones they used to scrub your feet with. And um, of course uh, there's a little of, uh, uh, sulfur gas, you could smell it. It wasn't too bad where we were standing because uh, of course being lighter it would rise and the wind was taking it up actually to where the tourists were standing. So tourists did not get a chance to see this uh, eruption that we just saw. Um, and on, on our way up, we heard another eruption. So there was a total of four eruptions that we managed to see two of them. The one that you just saw on the video was the major one. Then there was a little one right after that, uh, about like 10, 15 minutes after that. Yeah, for 90, so I don't know if it's worth it. Um, on the way back up, it was a little bit harder for for me, anyways, because being a bigger girl, um, it was a lot easier down. On the way up, it's all straight uphill, which is good. Um, once we finally got out of the volcano, I felt accomplished. I achieved something that I didn't know that I was able to achieve. Life changing experience. Yeah, it's worth it. I love Karen. No justification and trying we are trying. I actually go for a I've been working but not too much in the so it's dynamic. Oh salsa dancing. I don't think that any of us were as coordinated as the instructor, but we, at least we tried. I mean, that's all you can do. We all had a really, really good time, I think. It was the one time where we all got to laugh at each other and, you know, nobody's personalities were clashing because the music was going. We were just having fun and not, like I've said before, you know, not just business and school, you know, all those were learning experiences, but also stuff like this was learning experiences, you know. We got to learn how to dance, and we got to learn how to just have fun and learn a little about each other. One of our core competencies was cultural immersion, and salsa dancing is a big part of the Tico culture of Costa Rica. So a dance instructor uh, from the village that we stayed in gave us salsa dancing lessons. Some of us did better than others at it. When we went to Odalie's house, we were in um, business workshops, and Monica spoke about the history of Costa Rica, and uh, Ernesto spoke about the immigration issues. History in Costa Rica, they, they actually have a, a female uh, president, which was really cool, and she manages their country very well, and they have a free school system, and part of the immigration issue uh, is that the people that immigrate can take advantage of the free education system and they have they have problems just like any other just like we do in the United States so it was very interesting to hear about um, the history and the immigration it's something that you take with you since now we have an open market so that I won't become a major mm -hmm. Uh, is it last <laughs> in Costa Rica that are going to push us? Well, I have a friend that said we're going to develop a company. Ten, five, seven years, and then the Europeans took over the, the telephone. Mm -hmm. But the thing is.
just because our Costa Rica looked trip to look really fun because it was but we also did some business things too um we had a couple business workshops they were really really neat it wasn't like boring classroom we got to sit outside and we got to listen to them talk and we got to find out about Costa Rica business and how things work around the world and how things are so different from the United States and the problems and struggles they deal deal with and what's easier for them Monica was an international attorney in Costa Rica and she told us uh, a lot about the economics and the business uh, culture of Costa Rica as well as how the laws and rules uh, in the workplace are so different, vastly different than uh, in the United States. Uh, it hasn't caused great damages. Uh, for example, I was very impressed with the earthquake in Spain. The first Indian communities never have problems. The communities that have been developed afterwards, because they want to move to the, to the more developed area, <laughs> <laughs> I see the internet. They're not here. They send me messages about the net, the bottom. The next lecture, okay. 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 <laughs> it was neat to see that a teacher isn't just in a classroom and that um, they've taught me and that learning happens. The experience coming here has, I mean, we've been here for three days and I've learned more than I've probably ever learned in a classroom. Um, just because I get to experience, I get to see the people and how they really are, not just read about it in a book or see it in a movie. At this whole trip, I've learned unbelievably um, about everything. Coming here, I came with an open mind, uh, a blank slate, a clean piece of paper, and uh, didn't really know what to expect. And so, the limit the limit is beyond. So everything is so overwhelming, and it's so exciting. I had a lot of favorite parts about the trip, but the cloud forest was one of them because not just did. We get to walk, we got to learn about the land, and the guy who, tour, who was our tour guide was really neat. Um, we also got to learn a lot about each other, you know, how far we could be pushed or how far we could go. It was a quite a trek, and it was up and downhill. You know, some people had to turn back, but you just learned a lot about who everybody was and how they reacted in situations like getting tired and getting wore out. Learning about how to, to operate as a team. Um, it, when you're in class, you're there, but you're not, you know, you're there to learn your, for yourself. But when you're on a trip, you have to cooperate. You have to learn leadership. You have to learn how to um, manage with a group. And that in itself is a learning experience to be able to cooperate in a group setting and understand that people are out of their element. And um, so it, it's been a learning curve just from the people point of view to look at different people. I also enjoy learning the Spanish. We have a huge Hispanic population in America nowadays and I think that just the ability to relate to that culture, be able to speak a little bit of Spanish and understand a little bit of the mindset um, will help us all pace through life day to day back home. Um, even if it's just at the grocery store talking with someone or um, relating to them in, in, a, in a, a way because we have had a life experience rather than just class. 